Yo, what is up guys? It's Pedro here and in today's video I will be bringing you guys a film slash player breakdown of Washington football team third round pick Benjamin St. Juice. So we'll be going through, you know, his backstory, some of his strengths and weaknesses and be going through some of his film at this year's Senior Bowl. So if you guys are new, make sure to subscribe for Washington and NFL content. So let's get right into the video. And I will also talk about what his role will be in Washington and if he's going to get a significant amount of playing time in year one. We'll talk about that at the end of the video. But first, let's start off with some background info. So obviously, we drafted Benjamin St. Juice in the third round this year with the 74th overall pick. Uh, he is 23 years old. He's about six foot three, 200 and two pounds um, started off his collegiate career at Michigan then had some injury issues and transferred over to Minnesota he was born and raised in Quebec Canada he speaks three different languages um, played hockey soccer and football as a kid so you know that's some of the background info on him before we get into you know some of the strengths and weaknesses um, you know, he's somewhat quick, 4.5 40-yard dash is pretty good for a cornerback. And I do believe he had the fastest three-cone uh, time out of any cornerback in this year's draft. And, you know, that's very, very impressive. Shows his, you know, good closing um, speed. So those are some of the backgrounds, you know, you like to see. You know, he played three different sports as a kid, maybe even more three different languages as well. So let's go through, you know, some of his strengths and weaknesses, some of his, you know, collegiate stats. So um, like I said, you know, he started off his career at Michigan and later, uh, you know, later transferred to Minnesota. Uh, 2017 played in three games with Michigan, um, only, you know, had three tackles, really didn't do much. 2019 was his best year. He played in 10 games um, had 36 solo tackles, 45 total tackles, one and a half tackle for loss, um, and 10 passes defended. Still had a solid year in 2020, but only played in five games because, you know, their conference, I think the Big Ten played less games than they normally uh, would have. Yeah, they did. And also, he missed a couple games because of the virus, but still had a solid season. But his best season definitely was in 2019. 10 passes defended. He has no career picks, um, you know, th through his three years of playing, but also hasn't played that many games. He's still pretty raw. Um, so let's go through, you know, some of his strengths and some of his um, weaknesses. He has very, very good size and length for a cornerback, which really, really helps him get pass breakups. So the length and, you know, his size overall is really, really um, encouraging and you know he has the traits to be a great press man cornerback and that's you know a lot of players are you know um, drafted based off, uh, you know off of their traits and it's up to the coaches to be able to develop him and I, I really really like our you know cornerback um, coach Chris Harris I think he did a really good job last year and you know he's getting some attention he I think he interviewed for two defensive coordinator jobs this offseason so I feel like he definitely can develop Benjamin St. Juice and some other players in our, you know, secondary. Benjamin St. Juice has, you know, solid closing speed, uh, you know, three cone drill shows that he is a good tackler. You know, he's solid in the run game as well. Had, I think, two tackles for loss um, in his career, but he's pretty solid in the run game. You guys can see right here some of his other strengths, strengths and weaknesses. Um, and like I said earlier, the length that he has allows him to get a lot of those pass breakups that he had in 2019. Um, some of his weaknesses, he's really, really handsy in coverage, and that could translate to a lot of penalties, you know, later down the line, especially in the NFL. Um, he sometimes struggles to find the ball um, down the field. He hasn't gotten any picks so far in his career. We'll see. I think that could definitely change in the NFL. 
And one other thing that I do think he needs to improve on a little bit is his transi transitional quickness. And something that can definitely help with that is if he gets better in his route recognition. But, you know, overall, I think Benjamin St. Juice is a very, very intriguing prospect for the Washington football team because if he does hit, the Washington football team is going to have a great cornerback trio in Kendall Fuller, Benjamin St. Juice, and William Jackson, and all of them will be under contract for, you know, pretty solid deals. So now let's get into, you know, some of the clips from the Senior Bowl in the 1v1 matchups. Okay, so let's get started. And no, I am not a film expert at all. I am just, you know, letting you guys know what I see. So let's get started. And these were clips from the Senior Bowl. So all of these guys, you know, at least most of them, almost all of them got drafted by an NFL team this year, the cornerbacks and the wide receiver. It's a 1v1. It's pretty much, a, you know, a drill designed for the wide receiver to win. If you, you guys can look at this, I'll leave the link in the description. Almost every single time the wide receiver wins the rep, but nonetheless, let's go ahead and get started. So this clip right here, you know, he, you know, Benjamin St. Juice has good speed, but sometimes, you know, he gets beat over the top pretty quick. And you guys can see this right here by Nico Collins gets beat over the top. Um, Nico Collins, you know, creates some separation and he's able to, you know, Benjamin St. Juice is, you know, able to close a little bit, but the Ball is a little bit underthrown, and he's able to contest it, but Nico Collins is able to make the catch. So you guys can see that again real quick. You know, um, he gets beat over the top, and that's something he's going to have to work on, his transitional quickness. So let's go on to a couple more clips um, right here. Show this, this shows his physicality. This is a tight end. Um, I don't think he got, I'm not sure if he got drafted, but he got like a really bad injury in the senior bowl. But you guys see how physical he is at the line of scrimmage, um, how handsy he is, and who knows, like, just watch. Look how handsy he is, and he's able to create the pass breakup, but that might be a pass interference uh, penalty um, in the NFL, but still, I like the physicality. Um, just need to refine some things, but that's a, that's a big guy right there that he's going up against, and his length, he's able to create the pass breakup. So, um, a couple more clips right here. He goes up against him the next time, and I thought he did a much better job right here. Um, stays pretty close to him and is able to create the pass breakup right there. Strip it right out of his hands. We'll see that one more time. I like this rep a lot more. Um, and yeah, he stays with the tight end um, and is able to break it up. And partly because of his length, you see right there. Um, so yeah, I think, you know, he has a lot of the great traits and it's up to Chris Harris and, you know, Ron Rivera, Jack Del Rio, all those guys together to develop him into, you know, a great outside corner, which I definitely think he has the potential to be. So let's go through a couple more clips right here. Um, let's see right here. I think this is right here. So Right here, I'm not sure what he's doing right there. He does create, you know, uh, Dwayne Eskridge does drop the ball, but still, he's wide open. Wasn't really a great rep by him. Um, Dwayne Eskridge has a bunch of separation, so I'm not sure really what he was doing there because Benjamin St. Juice is giving him a bunch of space right there. Um, a couple yards of separation, but the, again, like I said, this drill is designed for the wide receivers to win it. Um, I'll leave the link for you guys to see this right here, but you know, this one is a little bit of a better rep by him. He does get beat. He does definitely get beat right here, but by a lot, but you guys show, I mean, you guys can see his physicality and he's able to, um, you know, create that incompletion. So, you know, not, he definitely, definitely is raw and he's going to need some time to develop, but he has those traits. He has that length and physicality to really, really develop into a good outside cornerback. And ideally, I don't think it's going to, you know, he's going to start this year, but ideally after this year, you have him on the outside and then William Jackson on the other side. So those two are your outside cornerbacks and you transition Kendall Fuller into the slot. I think that would be a great scenario. I think Benjamin St. Juice is really, really intriguing and has some really, really good potential. Um, one quick thing, he had a 21 forced completion or forced incompletion rate 
according to Pro Football Focus, which was third among third draftable cornerbacks. So yeah, sometimes he does get beat over the top, but a lot of those times his length makes up for it. So he's going to have to improve a little bit, but I really like what he brings to the table. And at the very least, in the first you know year or so, he's going to provide some good depth. And I think eventually he can turn out to be a really good outside cornerback. So thank you guys for watching the video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And you know, go ahead and check this out right here so you guys can see all the reps from all of these guys and you know, see how, you know, the wide receivers pretty much won every single rep. And let me know which player you guys want to see me do next. Thanks for watching and peace.